Okay. To dive in a little bit more on uh, your uh, cardiology and being able to read your EKG, we'll go over the paper so that we can identify, uh, once we identify the different uh, characteristics of your EKG, Tracy, you want to know how you can use the paper as far as determining the rate. So I've handed this out. Everyone has what looks like to be this kind of grid paper. And this grid paper goes all the way across. If you look at the top, or sometimes even the bottom, in this case, I believe it's the top. When you look at it, there are hash lines on the top. When you look at these two hash lines and then these two hash lines, this is the three seconds. <coughs> this is six seconds. So three plus three gives you a six second strip. So when they tell you to print out a six second strip, you would like to see the top markings come out at least to have three of those in there. So if you started printing and all you see is this part, you need to make sure you get another marker somewhere in there. Right, so these are the three second increments. In order to get a six second strip, you need two of these captured within that printout. Please, you know, when they tell you six, they don't want 60 second long strip of paper that's printed out. Usually this is just for them to kind of look at to get their variance as far as what the rhythm is like and whether it's regular or irregular. And then they can determine a rate. And rate's important because if it's less than 60, it's called a bradycardia. Bradycardia. And it's greater than 100, it's called a tachycardia. Tachycardia. <coughs> and for our simple purposes, we're just going to go back to a sinus rhythm. We usually have an upright P wave. Before everything else, there's a small upright P wave. There is what's called a QRS complex that's usually mostly upright and positive. And then we have at the end of that a T wave, the T wave. And every time this complex is regenerated, we should see a P in front of it, a QRS complex, and a T wave. P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T. We do know that between the P and the QRS complex is an interval where it slows down, so there's a slight pause. That should be there. So P, QRS, T, constantly over and over and over. And if it's a rate of 60 to 100, it would be normal sinus rhythm. If it is slower than 60, then it would be sinus bradycardia. And if it was faster than 100, it would be called sinus tachycardia. It always should have a P wave in front of it. It should be very regular, meaning that every beat is exactly the same and the space in between everything is the same. So that if I measured from one point of the QRS to the next, it would be the same all the way across. So I measured the spacing out equally. So everything would be the same, doesn't matter if it's sinus rhythm, sinus bradycardia less than 60. Sinus tachycardia greater than 100 beats per minute. But that's if we were looking at it on the EKG monitor. And the EKG monitor will have this flashing number in the corner of the screen and it gives you the QRS rate. But if we didn't have that number and we just had this, this tracing, we would want to determine how fast this thing is going across. And we can determine this by using the six second strip. This becomes count the many QRS complexes in this six second strip and multiply it by 10. 10, very good. So if you had three in this six second strip, you would have a bradycardia, right? A bradycardia. And hopefully, like I mentioned, we're looking for the P, QRS, and T. There's no changes in those. It looks exactly the same. All the intervals from the QRS to QRS, they're all equal. P wave to P wave, you measure those out, they would be all equal. This would be a sinus bradycardia, three complexes in the six second strip. The next way we would determine the rate would be if they had 10, so well, let's do 12. 12 of those QRS complexes within this six second strip, we would then have a sinus tachycardia at 120. And as long as we know every complex has a P, QRS, and T. We're okay. Uh, some other people will end up learning how to use the smaller box to determine. When you look at that EKG strip, this paper here, it's that smaller box, not the tiniest little box, but if you take that tiniest little box and add five of them, five across and five up, you notice that they're, they're marked up in another it's, it's grouped together, five by five. Small little five by five box. 
You take that five by five box and you made that five by five box is something like here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. This box now, this box is that small black thing right there. So now when we see an EKG complex that kind of sits on these boxes, <coughs> we then use each of that hash mark lines that come out of it, right? You take the grid lines. <coughs> and as the EKG goes through, you march it out. And now you continue to find out where the next one comes up. And you'd have to find some, some marking that you want to use three, so you, if you find some kind of line and it would basically start up at 300. That's your rate, 300, 150, 100. Seventy-five, sixty, fifty. We'll do this a little bit more in some EKG exercises. But this takes a little more concentration at this basic level to use the box method as you read across the EKG and you're looking at the QRS complex. So after the QRS complex is 3, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So if we add another complex here, again, 3, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50. So each time that we would mark this out, <coughs> it would be 50 and that would be a sinus bradycardium at 50. So again, this takes a little more science, it takes a little bit more effort for us. And we're just at the basic level. We want to use this basic understanding within the six second strip. <coughs> to get you an overall rate, overall. Now, if there's for some reason anything else other than sinus rhythm, you can still get a rate. You may not be able to determine what that rhythm is because we won't go into a lot of the, the rhythms that you would get in an advanced course or at a paramedic level course. But you can get a rate if you just use the six second strip. If you just count the QRS complexes within that strip, it can be regular or irregular, you'll get an overall rate. So this, at the basic level, is how we can determine rate, even if you're not seeing it on the actual oscilloscope or screen on the EKG, just from a basic printout.